During this week, we have studied probably one of the most important group of the periodic table. What aspect would you highlight about the chemistry of the elements of group 14? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, group 14 is probably one of the most important groups uh, in the periodic table. And it's the first time in the course that a non-metal appears in the group. And we observe how the metallic character uh, increases as you go down the group. In the previous group, we have observed some differences between boron and the other members. But in this group, you start with a non-metal, and then you have two important uh, metalloids, and uh, then two metals. And this, this has important consequences in the, in the chemical behavior. Exactly. For the first time, we have seen a non-metal element in the group, carbon, which shows important differences with the rest. Yeah, uh, for example, catenation. Uh, carbon is an element with a great tendency to form uh, ch long chains uh, with other carbon atoms. Uh, but this property decreases as you go down on the group, being hardly to see, uh, to see it on tin and lead. And in this group we clearly identify more than one common oxidation state for each element and therefore uh, the chemistry is more complicated and diverse. Correctly, and as happened for thallium, uh, now lead, the heavier element of the group, is more stable in the oxidation, oxidation state 2 plus uh, than the common oxidation state of the group 4 plus. And additionally, they tend to form combinations with negative oxidation states. Another important feature of uh, these elements is that they are highly covalent. Even for the two metals of the group, for which only uh, which only is possible to find ions in oxidation state 2 plus, but even in that case, uh, the hydrolysis of uh, tin 2 plus ions is extensive. And in this group, the chemistry has been something more complicated because these elements, uh, except of carbon, tend to expand their valence octet. Yeah, it's really curious uh, to observe that Lewis acidity is present even in combinations uh, where the element keeps a free pair of electrons, such as tin 2 chloride, being able to accept chloride ions to give trigonal pyramidal environment. Allotropy is another important property of these elements. I found really interesting how transition between tin allotropes, which is called um, tin pest, could be responsible for the defeat of Napoleon troops in Russia. And um, what about the chemical reactivity of these elements? In my opinion, uh, one of the most relevant uh, aspects in the high affinity of carbon and silicon for oxygen and fluorine, uh, in the case of silicon, which we have studied in more detail, uh, we have seen uh, that this accounts for the existence of a great variety of combinations, uh, such as silicates, aluminum silicates, uh, silites, and so on. Another important aspect about the chemistry of these elements is that their oxides are more acidic. Uh, for example, if we compare aluminium and silicon that are in the same period, uh, alumina is an amphoteric oxide, whilst uh, silicon dioxide are uh, more acid. Exactly, that question uh, is related with the fact that metallic character decreases from the left to the right in the period and therefore their uh, oxides are more acidic. Yes, and within the group, as, as we have observed previously, there is an increase in the basicity of the oxides as we, as we descend in the group. Yeah, and accordingly, an increase uh, in the metallic behavior uh, of, as you move down the group, there is an increase in reactivity. Yeah, uh, but remember that lead diminish its reactivity. Yeah, you're right. Its inertness is consequence of the coating of the passivates that passivates the metal. And what about the presence of these compounds in your daily life? In this aspect, this week has been really interesting. It is difficult to decide which applications are more or less important of these elements. For instance, Silicon and germanium applications in semiconductor industry is really present in our daily life. Yes, and tin has an incredible presence in alloys. Uh, while lead, although it's toxic, uh, is still ready in use in batteries, manufacture of glass, and absorbing materials for radiation and more. In this group, we found elements that have been employed by human beings since antiquity, uh, such as tin and lead. Tin is, along with copper, uh, the main component of bronze alloys uh, that were so important that a history period was named after them. 
Yeah, the case of lead is even more curious. Uh, we are, because we, as we learned, this element could have been responsible of mental instability of Roman emperors and therefore contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. In my opinion, the role of silicon in our lives is quite relevant, not only in semiconductor industry, but also in the industry of glasses, the relevance of silicon oils, rubber, silica gel, aerogel, ceramics, and so on. Yeah, and also the relevance of zeolites and desiccants, uh, ion exchangers or catalysts are only some of the examples of the extensive use of silicon. Yeah, uh, definitely this group is really important in our daily lives. Even lead, although its use has been reduced as awareness of its toxicity, uh, still has an incredible importance as lead acid batteries, whose production is incredibly high. Okay, this has been a very interesting week. Um, let's see what's uh, waiting for us uh, coming week with the Metal and Metalloids of Group 15 and 16.